Oh, hey, I think they're here already. No way, really? Oh my gosh, you guys are here early. That's all right. So for today's video, we're going to talk about our backyard bird photography studio. It's really easy and a great way to photograph uh, our feathered friends in the backyard. So we're going to talk about our blind. We're going to talk about our feeding station, the perches we use. We're going to show you exactly how to do it. So stay tuned. It's going to be a great video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you know when we upload new videos. Stay tuned. Making backyard bird pictures like this is actually surprisingly easy. So in today's video, we're going to show you exactly how to do this from the bird feeding station to the blind to actually picking the perches to make these beautiful kinds of pictures. All right, so here we are at the feeding station. So here's our blind. Um, and there's a few major considerations about setting up a bird feeding station. So number one is, is location, right? Location super important. So there's the first thing we need to consider is the light, okay? So the blind is set up so the sun comes up from the viewer's perspective on the left, sweeps across the, the sky and sets on your right. That way the, the light is falling on the birds for most of the day, okay? Now, depending on your situation, you may only be able to set up so you have light on the birds in the morning, which is fine, or just bird, light on the birds on the afternoon. Or in some scenarios, if you have trees and things, you need to photograph on cloudy days when it's not real contrasty, all right? But make that your first top consideration, okay? Then as we come to our feeding station over here, there's some considerations there as well, okay? Here's our, here's our uh, feeding station. So we've got a couple feeding stations. We're going to zoom in and talk more about the blind and the feeding station later, but I want to give you the big overview first. So location is important here. First consideration is backgrounds. We want to have nice out of focus backgrounds. When we focus on the perch, we want the backgrounds to go nice and out of focus. So we want to have some distance between our, our shooting perch and the background. So uh, we get, the, get those nice backgrounds. The next consideration is our, our subject's comfort, right? If you look off to the right of the feeding station, there's heavy woods and shrubs and brush and things. Birds, that's comfortable to the birds. They feel safe in there. So we want, they, they stack up in that, in that shade and they fly from that comfort onto the perch and that's when we take their picture, okay? If you don't have a situation like this, I have friends who have taken old Christmas trees and just put them in a, in a stand next to the feeding station so the birds have some cover close that helps them to feel comfortable. All right, the last thing is the distance from the feeding station to the blind, all right? We're in a blind, so we don't have the ability to move closer or further away as the subject changes, right? So we, we wanna shoot, I shoot with a zoom lens when I'm in a blind that gives me the ability to zoom in for a chickadee and zoom out for a cooper's hawk, right? So, Nicole and I shoot with our 200 to 400 in the blind on a crop camera, and we have our distance set up 16 feet away. That way we can do a full frame chickadee or zoom out for a full frame Cooper's Hawk. Okay, super important. So next we'll move in and we'll talk about the blind and show you how our, our permanent blind is built, and then after that we'll go in and do the feeding station. Okay, so once again, here's our permanent blind. All right. Um, it's made out of tongue and groove siding and two by four construction. The floor is just, it, it's set on top of gravel. I put a, fly, a plywood floor in it, but it was really simple construction. Uh, covering the, the shooting area is just a piece of camouflage netting that we just nailed onto the front of it. Super easy construction, works really, really well. Um, I'll show you a peek inside here next. All right, so let's take a look inside. Hey, look, there's Nicole. Hello. So here's the inside of it. Um, pretty basic construction. It's just four walls, really, with a, a shooting port. We built a shooting deck here out of a 2 by 8 uh, We've got a quarter by 20 bolt coming up through that. Uh, that way we can mount our ball heads or our gimbal heads on there. Works really well, really well. We don't have to worry about a tripod in here. Um, we've got a... Uh, the ceiling is just made out of corrugated plastic, which works really well, really well. 
let some light in and uh We've got a window in here so we can see what's going on behind us. Nicole had me put bars on here because this is my timeout area. Yeah, although I don't know that that's such a punishment, but. Yeah, I, I get in trouble go. on purpose a lot. <laughs> so, um, pretty easy. Now, obviously, a lot of people are not going to want to build a permanent blind, right? You're, you're not going to do something like this on your property. But if you want to use a, a portable blind, at the end of this video is a link to a talk we did all about portable blinds, which is a, which are a great option for this kind of shooting as well. All right, so here's our feeding station. So um, it's basically three elements, all right? First off, we have our feeder, our main feeder. And um, it's just filled with hulled sunflower seeds. And then we have two places on the top to put um, mealworms and uh, a special soot mix that we make. And we'll put a link to that soot mix in the, uh, or that recipe in the description as well. All right, then off to uh, the viewer's left is the woodpecker perch. This is where the woodpeckers come in. And then at the top of that, we have soot cakes, right? So the birds come in, they land on the perch, they hop up, they eat the soot. All right, and then off to the to Nicole to our right is the perch. Okay, this is how things look every day. Um, this is how the birds see it every single day. This perch is always here. This big feeder is always here, and this woodpecker pole is always here. So the birds come from the cover on the right. They sit on the perch. They make sure everything's safe. Then they dive in and they get the food. The woodpeckers come in. They land on that post. They hop up. They know where the soot is. They get the soot. This is how we do it every single day, all day. This is what the birds are used to looking at. Now, when we photograph, we change things up dramatically. Okay, so when we photograph, this is how we, we change everything up, okay? First off, we've taken that big old giant feeder down. We've replaced it with a small cup, all right? That way, only one bird can get on that cup at a time. That means there's gonna be a line formed, and that line form is gonna form on our perch that we've put up, okay? And then we've taken the unattractive post down where the woodpeckers go, and we've put up a more attractive post for the birds to, uh, for the woodpeckers to sit on. All right, now we'll go into each of these individual elements. Alrighty, so the main seed feeding station is just an old peanut butter jar lid with a post glued on the bottom of it. That slides right into a hole. We bore it into the four by four post on the bottom. It just fits right in there. This, this same little post is on the bottom of the feeder. So I just pull the feeder off and put this little thing on there. Once again, having a smaller feeder forces only one bird to get to the seed at a time, and then a line forms on our perch off to the right. Okay, the woodpecker station, same thing. We've taken that ugly log that they're used to sitting on all the time, and we put up the photogenic log that they're gonna photograph. This is just mounted, I just, there's a hole dug into, uh, drilled into the bottom of the post, and I drilled a spike, a landscaping spike, into the four by four post, and that landscape spike just goes up onto this this perch and um, and then I've taken the soot cakes and just velcroed those onto the top of this uh, to the top of this beautiful post for the land for the woodpeckers. It works really well. Everything's based on four by four posts. I've got squirrel baffles on everything. Uh, you can just put these into the ground, or I've got I found some stands on on Amazon that work really really well. All right, and lastly. This is our stage. We've taken away that ugly stick that's on the on the perch all the time that the birds are used to seeing, and we've replaced it with a more photogenic uh, stick for the birds to sit on. All right, we're using a plamp to hold the uh, the perch, and these things are really wonderful. They're totally flexible, uh, articulating arms with a clamp on each end. And you can clamp one onto your post and clamp one onto the perch, and they'll, they'll hold it in any position that you want. They work really, really well. Now, perches are the absolute key and the creative part of doing backyard photography. This is where you get to be creative and make the pictures that you want to make. So next, we're going to go into, we're going to show you some of our images and some of the perches that we use and talk about the different perches. This is where the real artistry of this is. So we're going to have a, a, a slideshow and show you some images and some perches and how to select a great perch. So the perches, 
As we mentioned earlier, the perches are everything in this. This is where we get to put our own artistry into the work. You guys will probably recognize this perch. This was the the woodpecker post that Nicole and I put up in the in the uh, in the video earlier. So for the woodpecker perches, we're just looking for for many of the woodpeckers like this downy. There's not going to be a lot of the perch, so we just want to have some texture and some color and something that's going to really set off the bird really well. And we're looking for good good poses. Um, we're lucky enough to have a couple of pileated woodpeckers that come in. And I like that this perch is a little smaller, right? It's not a really super thick perch. You can see all the way around the, the branch, and it really shows off the size of the bird pretty well. Plus, there's interesting texture and uh, bark patterns on it that really really show it off well. So for this image of this nuthatch, this is one of the fun things about sitting and doing this from a blind. This isn't cropped at all. This is exactly how I shot it through the camera. And I mentioned having a, a, uh, a zoom lens. This is super handy for this. So a lot of times when a Cooper's hawk or something like that comes into the yard, most of the birds will ditch into that cover so they feel safe. Some birds, like nuthatches and a lot of times downies, will just freeze. And that's what this guy did. So this was actually like a quarter of a second exposure at F-16. And I was just able to zoom in really tight, get it exactly how I want it. And then, of course, we've got that wonderful depth of field from that super stop-down situation. So for the songbirds... Perches are a little different, right? We've got to we we've got to pick something pretty for the for the bird to sit on, and there's usually going to be a little bit more going on in the picture of the bird. But what we want to do is we want to we're making a picture. We want to think about where the bird is going to sit, right? And this was exactly where I wanted this little chickadee to sit on this milkweed. I had this whole picture in my head, and I knew the milkweed was going to fill up the right-hand part of the frame. And then it's just a matter of sitting there waiting for the bird to get in the right spot and give you a good position. And sometimes that takes a long time. Um, but the artistry really is in the purchase. So um, here's the Carolina wren. These guys are little posers. Uh, his, his tail up like that. They just really love to pose. All the wrens sit sit really well. Okay, seasonally, a uh, red-breasted nuthatch on a pine bough. Uh, one of the tricks is leave your perches out in the weather so they get covered with snow and ice and, and give you more of a story, right? And you can even sprinkle a little snow on your perches if you're shooting in winter. Uh, Nicole and I photograph uh, the birds a lot in the winter. Winter is one of our favorite seasons to photograph because the birds look great. Plus, they come in more. They're at the feeders more because they're, if there's snow on the ground, all of their food is covered in snow. And obviously, um, it makes for some dramatic and, and cool pictures. Um, so some perches are easier than other perches. This is a difficult perch, right? This bird, it's hard to get this bird. He's got to sit in just the right spot. It's pine needles, so they're not really comfortable. Sometimes you got to spend a lot of time to get the birds to sit in just the right spot. So if you're doing just a lichen-covered branch, obviously that's going to be an easier perch to get a bird to sit on. Um, you know, and again... Having that zoom lens, having that ability to zoom in for a chickadee and pull back for a bird like this blue jay really uh, increases your opportunities to shoot different birds at different different situations. Again, we love to photograph in the winter because that's when the birds look great. Get out when it's snowing. You know, that's part of the story. Make sure you're out there uh, working the seasons. Okay, but get out. At the other times of the year, you know, you get a whole different set of backgrounds, right? Our backgrounds have more color in the spring. Obviously, the birds are in. These goldfinches look pretty drab in the winter season. Um, and goldfinches like this, they will sit together. They come in in a flock of five or six. A lot of times, you'll get one or two or three on a perch at a time, right? These are just apple blossoms. Think about where the birds are going to sit. Ten, the, the birds are typically going to sit towards the higher end of the perch, Okay, so think about that. Think about that in your composition when you're when you're selecting your perch. Okay, another difficult perch uh, was this fern frond, right? It's kind of flimsy, so birds don't sit on a lot. So we, we invested a lot of time trying to get this bird sitting here. Now, typically, I said earlier that the birds will go to the to the highest point. 
But because the highest point of this fern frond is going to be super flimsy, this chickadee knows that, right? So he's going to sit back where the stalk's a little uh, thicker and is going to support his weight a little bit better. Then, of course, um, in the springtime, we've got beautiful flowers that we can photograph the birds on, too. So, um, next thing we're going to talk about is the... Uh, Another option for a blind that people don't think about actually photographing out of your house. That's coming up next. Here's an idea. You all live in a big blind. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Set up a feeding station outside of a window or outside of a door wall by your home and you can shoot right outside the window. I have a lot of buddies who photograph this way. It's a great way to do it. Um, just think about the three things. Make sure you got light that you can use to photograph. Make sure that uh, you've got some cover in the area so the birds feel safe and keep an eye on those backgrounds. In our next video, we're going to show you our in-ground blind complete with reflecting pool, which is how we made all of these images. It's really creative and cool. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you can be informed when we upload a new video. Thanks.